Hello, I'm John Sargent and welcome to Argumental, the show where the hottest names in comedy debate the biggest issues facing mankind. Issues like, what's the point in us having all these football stadiums without having public executions? It makes no sense. <laughs> How many cocktail sausages are enough? <laughs> and why does my restraining order cover all of the pussycat dolls and not just Kimberly? <laughs> Here to argue such burning issues and others like them are our teams. In the red corner with Marcus Brigstock this week, it's Dom Jolly. <laughs> and joining Rufus Hound in the blue corner, please welcome Sean Locke. OK, let's kick off with round one, where we debate a big issue that's caused more head-scratching than when Class 4C missed their appointment with the knit nurse. We're talking about social networking. Gone are the days of carrying the easy girl's books in the hope she might get off with you. Nowadays, making friends is simple. Thanks to social networking sites, kids can even chat to paedophiles without leaving the house. <laughs> Bullying has never been easier. And if you're sick of celebs tweeting rubbish, simply control, all and delete them out of your life. It's all so much easier than back in Granddad's day. He had to use Friends Reunited. <laughs> yes, it's a cyber world of social networking. LOL, OMG, BUM. But the issue I want the team to argue over is this. Facebook friends are not real friends. Supporting this statement on behalf of the blue team, it's Rufus Hound. Of course, the friends you make on Facebook are not your real friends. That much is blindingly obvious. So being somebody's real friend basically means that no matter where they are in the world, no matter what dire straits they are in, there is nothing you will not do to help them because you are real friends. <laughs> If you have that relationship with somebody you met in real life, say in a coffee bar, you're stood behind them queuing for a latte, and they turn to you and go, oh, thank God I've got the right change, and you sort of chuckle, and then they look at you and go, I would die for you. <laughs> that is not somebody you want in even a fleeting relationship with. If you make a friend on Facebook, how do they do it? They send you a friend request. It, it makes it sound like the way you're going to be friends is, uh, yeah, can you just sign here, initial there, Initial there, and we can go for a half a pint on Thursday. Thanks very much. <laughs> do you want to be my friend, sir? Yes. Of course you do. <laughs> now, come here. Give me a lovely big cuddle. Look at you. <laughs> I wasn't even pointing at you. I was pointing at him. <laughs> and you said yes. We can go on holiday and everything. <laughs> <laughs> on Facebook, could it? <laughs> no, it's beautiful. Real friends are based on human relationships. And what do you get on Facebook instead? You get friend suggestions. Have you seen this now? Oh, you're friends with Billy and Charlene. Maybe you'd also like to be friends with Will. <laughs> That's like when you get those Amazon book recommendations. Oh, I see you've bought biographies of Darwin and Newton. Maybe you'd also be interested in something by Katie Price. <laughs> <laughs> There are differences between your real friends and your Facebook friends. Your Facebook friends will send you a quiz to find out which one of the Saturdays you are. Whereas your real friends will ask you in which order might you fuck the Saturdays. <laughs> your Facebook friends will ask you to post those insane pictures of your mental night out. Your real friends will ask you to burn those pictures of our insane night out. <laughs> Your Facebook friends will go, do you want a game of Scrabble? Your real friends will go, stop playing Scrabble, you bummer! <laughs> your Facebook friends will send you a drink. Your real friends will go, it's your round, you bummer! <laughs> there is a world of difference between the genuine joy and love of human experience, human relationships and human friendships, and that which is virtual, cold and robotic. And that is why I ask you to find it in your hearts, not in your servers or your mainframes, your actual human hearts to vote for the blue team. Thank you. Thank you, Rufus. Now, posing the statement and arguing that Facebook friends are real friends, it's Marcus Brigstock. Thank you. Do you see how quickly an actual relationship can go wrong, sir? The man was all over you like a wet puppy with a twat's moustache. <laughs> that is not what you want. Your Facebook friends 
are your real friends, friends that understand you. Facebook friends don't get you in a headlock when they're pissed and go, I bloody love you, you're brilliant, you're the best mate in the world. Classic. And then be sick in your hair. <laughs> the fleshy friends, bodily friends, eh, it's difficult. They come round, they show you pictures, and you have to look at the pictures, and you have to say nice things like, oh, yes, it's a beautiful baby. Well done. When they send you a picture on Facebook, you can say, look at that, she shat out a gremlin monkey child. <laughs> That's the freedom that your Facebook friends provide you with. If you have a fleshy friend round at your house, right, and then you come down from the shower naked and give them an update on how you're feeling, I'm feeling fresh and uh, pretty excited about the day. They will, not unsurprisingly, be a little freaked out. Your Facebook friends, they've no idea. You can do that naked. You can do whatever you want without your plums putting people off. <laughs> on Facebook, you can throw a sheep at a friend. Trust me. I have learned from bitter experience <laughs> that if you do that with actual people, they will be furious. <laughs> and my attempt to poke my sister didn't go any better. <laughs> Listen, meeting up with your friends is actually a relatively new experience. I mean, in time gone by, you'd sort of meet them once or twice and then you would carry out your friendship through correspondence. And that's why when people do meet up, they get pissed so quickly. Because actually being with your fleshy friends is a nightmare. You meet your friends and you go, let's get the first drink in, so you can take the edge off how ghastly they are. <laughs> Very few people operate on Facebook seriously pissed ever since the Leslie Grantham disgrace. <laughs> Who here is on Facebook? Be honest. Give us a cheer if you're on Facebook. <laughs> this man here is trying to call you a loser. Don't take it from them. Don't let them bully you. Vote red. <laughs> Thank you, Marcus. So, Dom and Sean, is there anything you'd like to say in support of your teammates? Yeah, I think Rufus is right, Marcus is wrong. <laughs> yeah, sure. Good well, that's a him. silly thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> what I like about Facebook friends is that it gives you the offer to decline a friendship, which yeah. I think you don't get in real life. But sometimes someone just looks a bit dodgy and you say no and they just never find out about it. What I'd like is another button that makes it very clear that you've declined them. <laughs> it just says, no, fuck off, you frightened me or something like that. But <laughs> not there yet. If you only existed on Facebook, that is all your life would be. Endless clicking and smiling and commenting. Real friends are there for you in the last bastion and your Facebook friends are anathema. <laughs> Thank you all. So, are Facebook friends real friends? It's time for the studio audience to decide who made the best case. Vote red for Marcus and blue for Rufus. Vote now. What the hell? What the hell? These are Twitter people. <laughs> so that's a victory for the blue team. Well done, Rufus and Sean. <laughs> They've convinced our audience that Facebook friends are not real friends. Unlike many people my age, I like to keep bang up to date with things like Facebook and Twitter. The only thing I don't understand is how the 160 friends I've added can fit inside something as small as a laptop. <laughs> In recent years, add me on Facebook has become a common chat-up line. I've always had success with, you must be an astronaut because those boobs are out of this world. <laughs> but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> our next round is called, That's a Brilliant Idea. We're going to present our teams with a series of totally preposterous statements. It's our panellists' jobs to produce an argument in support of these statements. When I think they've made a convincing enough case, I'll press my buzzer and we'll move on. One more thing, they must begin each argument with the words, that's a brilliant idea. <laughs> Dom and Sean will play this one. <laughs> Dom, we'll start with you. Here's your first statement. <laughs> All new laws should be passed by the programme Loose Women. Well, that is a brilliant idea, since most of the people who commit crime are the lazy bastards who watch daytime TV. <laughs> Sean, 9-11 should be made into a musical. <laughs> that is a brilliant idea. <laughs> No, it's a very good idea. I think musical theatre could take on some much grittier subjects. I even think 9-11 would be a good subject for an episode of Scooby-Doo. <laughs> uh, 
Dom, we should build a rope swing over the English Channel. Well, that is a brilliant idea. Um, <laughs> personally, I hate day trips to France anyway. They're way too long. So I'd use a bungee rope. Zoom over there, grab your duty-free, slap a collaborator, straight back. 20 seconds, <laughs> perfect day out. That's all I need. Sean, drug taking in sport should be actively encouraged. Brilliant idea. Should be actively encouraged. And I think it'd be a good idea because it would level out. It would make it a more fair playing ground with those people who thank God when they win. Because they're cheating anyway, aren't they? They've got God <laughs> helping them, like they're in the long jump, and God picks them up and goes, ooh. <laughs> like that. So with the drugs, they can go, fuck you, God. <laughs> Dom, we should all speak in rap. In rap. That is a brilliant idea. Imagine Hugh Edwards rapping the news. Gordon Brown, what a clown, in his frown and his gown. Get out of my town, David Cameron. It's not great. Idea. <laughs> Sean, naughty school kids should be tasered. That is a brilliant idea. <laughs> I'd pay for that. I'd pay good money on a Saturday morning instead of taking them to go karting. Take them to be tasered. Go, <laughs> they come out, they go back in, I've paid for four more goes. <laughs> oh. You can go back now, it's easy. We've arranged all this, that's absolutely fine. Those are your seats, get to them, Harry. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we've been told off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well done, both of you. But who do you in the studio audience think was the best at proposing the preposterous? If you think it was Dom, hold up your red card. And if you think it was Sean, hold up your blue card. Vote now. Ooh, that looks red to me. Very close, but it seems like red has won. Well done, Dom and Marcus. Right. Join us after the break when we'll be talking Madonna and asking, who's that girl and where did she get all those kids from? Don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back to Argumental, a show that's seen more Barneys than a Fred Flintstone sidekick convention. <laughs> right, next up is Slideshow. One member of each team will again be debating a controversial issue. But this time, I want them to illustrate their argument using a series of pictures which they've never seen before. Marcus and Rufus, you're playing this one. Marcus, I'd like you to start by arguing that laughter is the best medicine. Here's your first picture. Laughter is the best medicine, ladies and gentlemen. You only have to look at this picture of Prince Charles to know that. <laughs> we know laughter is the best medicine. Richard Hammond smashed himself to bits in a big car crash. We all laughed, he got better. <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, you can put this down on tape because <laughs> laughter is... Well, fuck off. What <laughs> That's, that's, uh, that's the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> Who amongst the French hasn't laughed? Well, most of them. And that's why they suffer from such terrible ill health. And that's why they put this ridiculous <laughs> metal cock in the middle of Paris. <laughs> so that even the French, who were suffering with dreadful ill health, would go past and be able to go... <laughs> and suddenly they're better. Uh, now, this has been difficult for me. <laughs> I swear to God, you make one more noise like that, you are toast. <laughs> you see, you were feeling bad, and now you're better. So, as you can see, and I'm confident that I'll win this, laughter is the best medicine. Vote red! Thank you, Marcus. Rupert, I'd like you to argue the opposite, that laughter is not the best medicine. Here's your first picture. Laughter is not the best medicine. I know this because I have a baby. The best medicine is cowpole. Uh, <laughs> some people with babies applauding that sentiment. Cowpole is useful for a fever, for a cold, and if they can't sleep, literally a bottle, two bottles tops, and <laughs> you're asleep and fuck them. Uh, <laughs> laughter is not the best medicine, as this picture proves. <laughs> 
Colonic irrigation is <laughs> the best medicine. <laughs> and to find out what is the best medicine, you need to compare. <laughs> the... the traditional approaches to medicine with the alternative versions of medicine. Let me uh, explain what I mean. Um... <laughs> it's important uh, to get some fish. fish. Yeah, <laughs> fish, yeah. <laughs> fish oils, you see, glucosamine, that goes into your system. Those are the things that probably will make you feel better. Whereas laughter, who would want to be made to laugh to feel better? If you're feeling terrible and you go to the doctor and he just goes, oh, um... <sighs> <laughs> You've got AIDS. <laughs> Only joking. Marmalades. <laughs> no, it is. <laughs> it is AIDS. <laughs> no, I've got no. <laughs> that is a face that has not known laughter, is it? <laughs> you add an S, probably, because then you've got slaughter. <laughs> I think it laughters. Laughters, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> laughters is the best medicine, but one laughter on its own, oh, not yeah. the best medicine. <laughs> so, vote blue. Thank you. Thanks, Rufus, John and Dom. Would either of you like to pitch anything into this debate? Oh, sorry? Would you like to join in? Yes. We, we, again, yeah. I think we're absolutely right. Rufus nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, accidents, you don't call for a comedian, do you? You call for a medical professional. Yeah. Who then administers laughter to be taken with meals three times a day. <laughs> All I but that say, doesn't happen, does it? Because otherwise you'd have somebody... Somebody would pass out... <laughs> somebody would pass out on the plane, the tannoy would cry out, is there a comedian on board? You can imagine the comedian running forward and going, knock, knock! Damn it! I said knock, knock! <laughs> They could drive up in a clown car. <laughs> yeah. If this was true, you'd be Dr. Hound, wouldn't you? Yeah. Are you? No. There you go. <laughs> so laughter is not the best medicine then? It is. is. Yes, it You're is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So it's time for our studio audience to decide who made the best case. Is laughter the best medicine? It's a red card twice a day before meals for Marcus, who thinks it is, and a blue one rubbed gently on the affected area for Rufus, who thinks it isn't. Vote now. Hi. OK, that's a victory just for the Blues. Well done, Rufus. <laughs> You've convinced the audience that laughter is not the best medicine. I did a massive belly laugh on the bus the other day. It felt great until the woman with the massive belly hit me with her umbrella. <laughs> Personally, I prefer alternative therapies, like that one with the needles. What's it called? Oh, yes, heroin. <laughs> it's our popular culture round now, where tonight's debate is all about Madonna. <laughs> Named after Jesus' mum, this modest lady is an inspiration to independent women everywhere. As a working single mum, the kids come first. Madonna has written a successful series of children's books, which have sold in their millions. Madge, how do you do it? You must be the best mum in the world. You saw the lady in question there, but the statement I want you to argue is this. Madonna should be allowed to take home as many kids as she likes. <laughs> First up, supporting the statement, it's Dom. <clears throat> right, personally, I would like to see a get a kid from every country in the world except Australia. The reason? Because it would piss them off. <laughs> now, I think Madonna should do a Long Way Round-style TV show, a bit like <laughs> Ewan McGregor, yeah? And she should drive around Africa, but not on a motorbike. I want her to be in a sort of child-catcher wagon, like the one in, <laughs> in, in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. So she can have Angelina Jolie as her Charlie Borman. Angelina, for instance, has two Cambodian children. I really can't keep up. Madonna has two Malawians. So they basically both have spares. 
So what they can do is they can do swaps <laughs> for kids from countries that they don't have. And since Madonna has this new boyfriend called Jesus, she could even entice the little African kids out of their huts by singing like a good missionary, come with me and you can meet Jesus. <laughs> anyway, she has no other option than to adopt these kids. She has tried the natural way. She's had a go at shagging someone from pretty much every country on earth. <laughs> but do the maths. The best case scenario, it's 193 times nine months, which is 1,737 months. That breaks down to 144 years if she wanted to do it naturally. Now, I know she's in good nick, but even she is going to look a bit dodgy, legs akimbo and a leotard at 150. <laughs> so finally, Madonna, if you do have a day off, child catching, and you're relaxing at home with your feet up on a couple of your children. Watching this, here's an offer you can't refuse. I am of Swiss origin. I was born in Lebanon. I live in the Cotswolds. I'm very comfortable in a nappy. So come and get me, Mama. I'm, just so you know, I want to live in the house in Knightsbridge. So vote red. You know it makes sense. Well done. Next up, opposing Dom and arguing that Madonna should not be allowed to take home as many kids as she likes. It's Sean. Thank you. <laughs> ah, Madonna. Now, I'm arguing that Madonna shouldn't be allowed to adopt as many kids as she likes. If she tried to adopt over here, for example, the authorities would have looked at her application and said, right, so you're a 50-year-old single mother of three <laughs> who works nights dancing in your pants. <laughs> Sorry, I don't think we let you adopt. <laughs> She's got four kids by four different sources, if you're being correct about it, because she's getting them from different places all over the world, including Malawi, who I think are offering her a adoption loyalty card. <laughs> they're running the scheme now, they're very excited about it. But the reason she got the fourth one was as kind of company for the third one, which is a bit weird. It's a bit like when you know when you've got a goldfish <laughs> and you, you look at the tank and think, he's a bit sad in there, isn't he? You know, that castle isn't enough for him. <laughs> he needs more. Let's get him another little fish to put in. Uh, here you go, Dave's a fish. I couldn't get your sister. Um, <laughs> she's quite terrifying. Having sex with her probably terrifies a lot of men. It's a bit like taking a penalty against Peter Shilton, isn't it? You're thinking, he's there like that. Like that. Imagine Madonna there like that. Come on, then. <laughs> Impregnate me. Come on. <laughs> It'd be frightening, wouldn't it? It'd be, be terrifying. You know, with the scary tits and the, and the scaffolder's <laughs> arms. I wouldn't want them, them near my penis. It'd be a bit like, you know those uh, bits of equipment they take Formula One tyres off with, like... It'd be like getting a hand job off Audley Harrison. <laughs> but the main reason I don't think she should be allowed to adopt loads of kids is because of the Kabbalah, that load of hokey-pokey Kabbalah. Even Scientologists think it's bollocks. <laughs> It is. And the terrible thing is, you know, she doesn't celebrate Christmas, which is kind of weird considering she's called Madonna. <laughs> which is basically the mother of Jesus. It's a bit like Captain Birdseye banning cod. <laughs> but I don't think she should be able to adopt loads of kids because, let's face it, children aren't a commodity, are they? They shouldn't be bought and sold. Imagine the situation when they grow up, they're rummaging through their parents' drawers and they find the receipt. <laughs> Go blue! <laughs> Thanks, Sean. Marcus and Rufus, would you like to add anything to support your teammates? Yeah, I mean, Sean said she doesn't celebrate Christmas, but she's Madonna every day's Christmas. Those kids can have whatever they want. Wake up in the morning and just unwrap stuff and find out that it's her. <laughs> she's a, a, like, deranged vegetarian times... A billion. She's like macrobiotic. They're thinking they're going for cheeseburgers and coke. They're having mung bean smoothies. That's the shit. <laughs> Alfalfa burgers. That's the shit they're having to shovel down their poor throat. <laughs> you can have anything want. you want. You're exactly. a Madonna's kid. You can have what you want because she's not there. She's not around. So she's guilt mumming. So what, exactly. what do you do with that? Anyone who's got divorced parents know you play them off against each other. Exactly. You can get loads. And then you go and stay with Guy Ritchie and you go, oh, she's terrible. She's never there. And he gives you a pint or something, a pipe. <laughs> <laughs> dress, so dress you up in a little pearly outfit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you also. Should Madonna be allowed to take home as many kids as she likes? Once again, the studio audience will decide who made the best case. It's a red card for Dom and Marcus, who think Madonna can have as many kids as she likes. 
and a blue card for Sean and Rufus, who think enough's enough. Madonna and Child is not a Malawian two-for-one offer. <laughs> so, red for Dom and blue for Sean, vote now. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, all right. So, a clear win for the Blues. Well done, Sean and Rufus. They convinced the audience that Madonna should not be allowed to take home any more kids. It's wonderful to see Madonna and Angelina Jolie get together with their kids, looking at them all with such motherly pride and saying, got, got, need, got, need, got, got, need. <laughs> I think that Madonna should stop collecting children and concentrate on what she does best, press-ups. <laughs> so at the end of that round, Rufus and Sean are in the lead. Time now for the final round and a last chance for our teams to show just how argumental they really are. I'm going to show them a series of images. All they have to do is suggest what argument the picture is proving. OK, teams, here's your first one. <laughs> I think it's an argument for that new show, Pimp My Penguin. <laughs> that is an argument against the sequel, March of the Penguins to The Revenge. <laughs> Or maybe it's uh, an argument against penguins opening barbershops. <laughs> Next one. An argument against allowing Graham Norton doing any sort of town planning, I think. <laughs> I think this is an argument against the mini roundabouts. Uh, I mean, you can see they haven't, they haven't followed it round at all. <laughs> I think it's a good argument for Peter Stringfellow getting a trawler. <laughs> Captain Stringfellow. I sail the seas looking for a fish. <laughs> Under the new EU fishing quotas, though, he'd have to throw at least three of them back. Yeah. <laughs> this is an argument for being the person who gets to put the body paint on. <laughs> I think that's an argument for cleaning out Russell Brand's fish tank. <laughs> OK, that's it. So, for the final time tonight, it's down to our studio audience to decide who made the best case. Red for Marcus and Dom, and blue for Rufus and Sean. Vote now. I'm not sure what we're facing on that. So, I can tell you that the blue team have won the round, which means this week's winners are the blue team. <laughs> well done, Rufus Hound and Sean Locke. Commiserations to Marcus Brigstock and Dom Jolly. That's all we've got time for. Good night. There's a brand new show on Friday, 19th of March at 10, starring Phil Jutus. It's called Comedy Exchange. It's about stand up both sides of the Atlantic. Back to tonight and next, a new today's episode of Have I Got News for You?